Here to help us break down the long-lasting effects of this pandemic is Larry Ward, the president of the Constitutional Rights PAC and an organizer for the movement We Are Not In This Together. So I appreciate you coming on tonight because right now it's a time where media really controls the narrative of what's happening both on broadcast, that's something in the past that we've talked about, but also online as well. So when it comes to your movement, you guys have been taking a very unique approach as well. I've seen some of your videos. Can you explain to our viewers what the movement We Are Not In This Together is actually about? Well, let's start by, by saying what corporate media was doing, what the what the politicians were doing. They keep coming out with commercial after commercial saying, stay home, stay safe. We're in this together, buy our product. Over and over and over again, we're hearing that drumbeat. Well, we're not hearing the other side, you know, because quite frankly, we need to hear the other side. We're not in this together. There are people who need to get back to work. There are people who need to get back to church, people who need to get back to their regular lives. And what this what the part of the story the media is not covering is, is quite frankly, is the other side, the health hazards of keeping this thing in, under lockdown. There was a study done in the 80s called the Bluestone Study that said every 1%, for every 1% increase in unemployment, 37,000 Americans die, either from stress-related diseases like heart and stroke, suicides, drug addiction, everything else. And not to mention the cancer uh, diagnosis in the country are down dramatically, not because cancer went away, but because people aren't going for checkups. I think you're exactly right to say this, because when you tune into the media, it's either you're for lockdowns or you think that the whole coronavirus outbreak is a hoax. And that is not the conversation that is being had among the American people. The American people want to help. They want to do what they can. But when they're put in a situation where they can't make an income, when they're not getting their unemployment benefits, they are put in a dire situation where they have to look out for their family first. And that's not a conversation that is having being had in the media most of the time. So when it comes to not portraying the other side, do you think it's a matter of politicization, some media narratives just want to be pushed and not show the other side? Well, yeah, it's absolutely politicization. And, and it's also the fact that we've been lied to. You know, in the beginning, the first couple of weeks of the, of the lockdown, of the quarantine, the very beginning, what we were told over and over again was this was for beds and this was for ventilators and maybe PPE, that we needed to stop the, the, the rush at the hospital and we needed to flatten the curve. That was what we were, pro that's what we were told we were doing this for. But in truth, what, what, what happened is after we flattened the curve, after there are plenty of beds, look, even in New York, in the hottest spots of hot spots, they pushed the USS Comfort away. They didn't need it. They don't need the beds. So what are we, what are we under lockdown for? What are we under house arrest for? The only reason we're, we're doing this is because, the, in my opinion, the, the politicians on the left like keeping their thumb on the American people. They like keeping their thumb on the economy. And they want this narrative in, to collide with what's coming out of, of Barr and Durham's office in terms of the, the, the Russia collusion uh, narratives. Mm. When those two narratives collide, they're going to come back and they're going to say, well, how could you go after your political opponents during a pandemic? And that's all that, that this really is about. This this is turned into a political football. And instead of instead of working on the benefit for, for the Americans, the politicians and corporate America are trying to keep uh, keep their thumb right on it. So we are not in this together, which is why we put the site up to get what we are not in this together dot com with with that great video. And Larry, when I take a look at this issue, it is a little bit concerning to me because even where we are right now, the country is polarized. It's divided at the moment. And the media environment that we create only adds to that polarization. I mean, no longer are we having debates from both sides on networks in particular, but even on social media. There's an incentive to say things that speaks to a certain ecosystem, if you will, and people don't want to leave that bubble. And that, to me, makes people more extreme in their views, and it also de-incentivizes debate. Are you fearful for the future of media? I, I am very fearful for not only the future of media, but for the future of the country. If we don't get this right, if we don't stand up for our rights right now and, and let these politicians know that that's not OK, we're, we may lose our country forever. They're not going to give back. Uh, our freedoms if we don't take it back. And at the end of the at the end of the day, I think Americans are coming out. Look, we the, the Republicans won an election in Los Angeles, California. They just won an election uh, two couple of days ago in Virginia in in a in a city that voted uh, for Obama twice, Hillary Clinton, and voted for all Democratic governors. Mm. They just kicked every Democrat out. I think the American people are ready to take back their rights. They're ready to open their businesses, and we're not asking permission. Yeah. We're just going to do it.
No, and I think when it comes to, to that polarization, I think social media may be a uh, curse in some ways, but it's also a blessing in the sense that it's getting more information out to the people. And I think it's coming to the detriment of a lot of legacy and broadcast outlets because a lot of the things they got away with in the past, they're now being held accountable for. So I think that might be a silver lining in all this. But Larry Ward, I appreciate you coming on tonight, breaking down your organization. All of our viewers can go check out the website. We've been showing it at the bottom of the screen. Larry, thank you.